Hello, my name is Nassim and welcome back to Storytime. I have the pleasure of stepping in for Steven today. Our first story of the day is... Am I the asshole for telling my husband his daughter is embarrassing me? Hot Polemo 552. Yesterday, I, 30F, was chilling at home with my MIL, talking and drinking coffee, when husband, 37M, arrived. He asked me if I would take his daughter, 12F, shopping for a dress. A little bit of context. When he was younger, my husband had a relationship with a woman, let's call her Sarah, and they had Mary, their daughter. He was having his rebel phase, going against his parents with this relationship, but it did not last. He realized they are way too different as individuals and broke up when Mary was three. I met my husband six years ago, and we got married four years ago. Our relationship is amazing and I get along extremely well with my in-laws. I was immediately accepted to the family and my MIL treats and introduces me to people as her daughter. As you can imagine, this has caused a lot of drama with Sarah because she never received the same treatment from the family. But truthfully speaking, she is not someone you wish to have in your social circle. Mary and I get along good. Everyone is on the same page that she has a mother and that I am not trying to replace her. I'm just her father's wife. However, she spends most of her time with her mom and Sarah is teaching her extreme hippie BS like she should not abide by the expectations society has on women. She should not feel pressured to act, look, or behave as what society considers acceptable and so on. Mary therefore is allowed by her mom to not shower for days in a row, wear dirty clothes, not brush her teeth or hair. This has become her way of living because she refuses to shower or dress properly all the time. It pains me to say, but she could pass as a homeless child if you see her on the street due to her appearance. Back to yesterday. One month from now, the entire family will attend a gala where my husband will receive an award. It's an important moment in his career, and he asked me if I will go with his daughter to buy a dress for the event. I told him honestly that I prefer not to. I explained that I really feel embarrassed being seen with Mary in public. She dresses horrible, and most of the time her clothes are dirty, she stinks, and does not brush her hair. MIL agreed and mentioned to my husband that it would be best if Mary does not attend this event because she will make us look bad in front of all the people that will be present. I was on my MIL side. Husband was sad, but he also agreed with us and mentioned he will think about it. Am I the asshole? ST3D. You're the asshole. You're focused on appearance, how others will see you. Instead of the situation at hand, this child is being neglected in terms of personal hygiene. Bad teeth care will likely cause horrible problems down the line, e.g. cavities, losing teeth, etc. She is a little girl. She doesn't know better. She is just following the guidance of her mom. When you're a kid, you don't know better. You see embarrassment. I see neglect. Why is your husband not doing anything when she is in his care? Why is your husband not petitioning the court to get more time with her? Is it because you're too worried about appearance? Maybe look in the mirror and see what you're missing. Respectfully, this girl deserves better care. I hope y'all do something. Hapolemo552, do you think we have not tried to explain to her that what she's doing is wrong? Her mother has indoctrinated her, and she thinks that my MIL and I are shallow, and that she has to be a feminist like her mom, who does not take care of herself neither. I tried many things to get her to have better hygiene. I bought her very expensive natural products like shampoo, shower gel, etc. because she claimed the regular ones had chemicals that are harmful for the skin and the environment. She never used them. I explained to her the health aspect. She does not accept it and says I am exaggerating. I tried, but nothing works. Story 2 Am I the asshole for not letting strangers stay in our home? MoMA26 My husband belongs to several men's improvement groups and other community groups. Whenever someone needs a night or two stay, he routinely offers our home. He has met, once or twice, some of these men, but most are total strangers. Friend of a friend of a friend. I do not like this, and I've told him on several occasions. He says he won't do it again, and then repeats this behavior in two to three months. I forgot. I've already agreed they can come, so what can I do? We have had so many discussions about this. His response is that this is his home too. My response is that he can help them find another overnight or direct them to a hotel. We are both in our 70s, and I just don't feel safe having total unvetted strangers here. Am I the asshole? Comments. Olivia Emro. Not the asshole. 
You have set a very appropriate boundary and your husband refuses to follow it. Dolls their donuts. He doesn't forget. By the way, he just knows you'll put up with it in the end because you have been doing so thus far. Next time he does it, you go stay at a hotel with a spa, get a massage and a facial or something else you'll enjoy. Let him take the bulk of the risk and all of the hosting duties. A few instances of having to do all the work himself, if he hasn't been, and slash or getting hit with your hotel slash spa bill will probably give him the kind of consequences he needs to remember in the future. You are under no obligation to stay under the same roof as total strangers. If the stranger can't go elsewhere, you can. Story 3 Am I the asshole for denying my wife's request to break niece-slash-nephew gifting structure for a sister who's the only single parent of all of us? Hepcat508 I have a brother and a sister, and my wife has one sister. My siblings are married, and between the two of them, there are five kids. My wife and I have three kids. My wife's sister is a single mom with two kids. Those kids are the youngest of the entire group. We have established gifting limits by age. So as the kids get older, their gifts get a little more expensive. My siblings' kids and our kids are pretty close in age, while my wife's sister kids are much younger. There's a 10-year gap between the older group and my wife's sister's oldest child. My wife feels bad about her sister being a single mom. The baby daddy was an absent father, so I think she's better off, to be honest. So she wants to spend the same amount of money for those two kids as we spend on the other kids, which for two kids, it's almost 150 extra dollars for Christmas than what we'd all agreed on for their ages. If it was just $150, then it wouldn't be a big deal, but their family tradition is to buy gifts for everyone in the extended family. So this really adds up. So I told my wife that I was not comfortable with their sister's kids being given special treatment. We had a fight about it with my wife, saying that they don't have a dad, so what's the harm in giving them more presents? I don't feel like this is fair to the other kids, and my SIL kids don't suffer from a shortage of presents. My in-laws give them a lot more attention, IMO. This is something that creates stress every holiday season, ETA, the gifts limits are broadly agreed on with my siblings, and my SIL is aware of them and has respected the limits when buying gifts for our kids. Am I the asshole? Comments. Gap Apprehensive 3184. You're the asshole. You set a rule with your siblings and expect your wife to enforce this with her family. Your siblings have five kids, hers has two. That works out a lot more money going to your side of the family than hers. I can only imagine what happens when the older kids stop getting gifts from aunts and uncles. Will you and your siblings decide your wife has to stop too because it's too much money? Story 4 Am I the asshole for asking my wife to please compliment me less? Unusual Flan 7732 I26M was asked by my wife 29F last night if she gives me too many compliments. I answered, yes, just a little bit, to which she replied, don't you like them though? And I said, yes, I do, just not so many a day. Because after so many, it doesn't feel as special or personal to me. It just feels like you're saying it to say it. She said that she had the same amount of meaning to all of them, and she just wants me to feel special. I replied, I appreciate that, but to me, it doesn't feel the same. And I asked if she could give me one to three compliments a day instead of her usual amount, which was about four to seven. She then got really quiet for 30 seconds and stormed off to the bathroom, brushed her teeth, and went to bed. I am confused to why she is mad at me saying how it made me feel. I thought she would appreciate the feedback. I'm not someone who hates compliments at all. I like them, just not so many at a time because it feels much less meaningful and less personal. I would just like to be complimented a little less every day so they feel more meaningful. So am I the asshole? Comments. Soggy Sluggy. Can tell you right now, she's treating you the way she wants to be treated. Start complimenting her and watch your relationship flourish. Story 5. Am I the asshole for telling my mom to F off? Legitimate scale 6636. My mom made some bull crap comment about my wife on Labor Day looking tired and sick. Some bull crap was said when I picked up my wife's plate to throw away and my mom said my wife was capable of throwing the plate away. She asked if my wife's legs or arms are broken. My wife told her to freak off because she was not in the mood. 
My mom can be overbearing and doesn't have the best relationship with my wife, going back to my wedding where my mom acted stupid during the wedding planning stage. My mom decided not to come to the wedding because of it. After Labor Day, my wife thought she had food poisoning and we go to the ER because she has been feeling like crap for the last weeks and not getting over it. Wife is pregnant. Now my mom wants to play besties with my wife and brought over some food. My wife has been non-stop puking since she first went to the ER. My mom is acting all supportive now, but my wife tossed out the food and asked my mom to leave. My mom cannot wrap her head around why my wife doesn't want to talk to her about the baby, and my mom is just trying to help. I told my mom my wife doesn't like you, and it's all your fault about how you treated her, so I told my mom to freak off and give my wife space and stop trying to help. No one wants it. My mom tried crying about the situation, saying she just wants to be involved and support my wife. I told my mom the time to prove that was in the past. Comments. New Adeptness 3296. Not the asshole. God, I cannot tell you how badly I wish my husband would level with his mom this way. Good on you for sticking up for your wife and protecting her peace. Trust me when I say, not every man has as much common freaking sense as you. Story 6 Would I be the asshole if I confronted my co-worker for wearing white to my wedding and then bringing no gift to? Unknown language 94 I, 29F, just had my wedding this past weekend. It was so much fun but I couldn't help but notice that my co-worker, 27F, that I invited was wearing a floor-length white dress at the wedding. I didn't say anything, but I was very taken aback, especially since I had vocally told her the dress code after she asked me, and it was on her wedding website. My maid of honor also commented on this to me, but I just let it go because I didn't want it to put a damper on my big day. Now, a couple of days have passed, and we've been going through our gifts and all the cards we received, compiling a list so I can get the thank you notes all in order. I noticed that she also didn't give us anything. Now I fully understand not everyone is in the best place to give a gift, but I still think giving at least a card saying congratulations that cost maybe a dollar would have been an appropriate thing to do. It has nothing to do with being materialistic, but just the principle of the matter. I'm a little baffled and put off by the whole thing especially since I would consider her a friend at work and we have known each other for over a year and a half. It is why I wanted her to be there on our special day. Would I be a jerk if I confronted her about this or should I just let it go? I don't want to come across as crass. Edit. Thank you all for the insight on how my response to the situation would influence the outcome. It has been very enlightening. I'm definitely going to distance myself from her and keep our relationship strictly professional from now on. One thing I want to add, since a lot of people were mentioning her financial situation, while I'm normally not privy to people's financial stuff, she is one of the few exceptions. She's been vocal in the past about how much her husband makes and how she chooses to work, but doesn't have to and things like that. So I don't think it's a financial hardship. Comment. Having hope 3594. You would be the asshole. The wedding's already done. If anything, she made herself look bad with what she chose to wear, and it does seem petty that you're going to confront her for not giving a gift or card, because she made a couple wrong choices. She could have made some other irrational choices at work towards you, would only likely cause her to be defensive and create strife. You don't want to be working somewhere if someone's giving you a cold shoulder or seeing themselves as a victim. Just back off the friendship. Story 7. Am I the asshole because I won't take my sister to the bus stop? Physical Computer 720 I'm 24Y female with a roommate living in the city with a 45 minute commute to work. I am single with no kids and I am not a morning person. I get up with enough time to get dressed, grab coffee and leave for work. My 18 year old sister was caught doing adult activities and told by my parents that she will now be treated as an adult at home. So she chose to move out. She asked if she could move in with me. My landlord increased our rent $200 and my roommate agreed to just have her pay that amount and not split the rent three ways. Sister gets her own room in the apartment, has no car. She found a job in the suburbs and taking the bus to work takes her two hours. She's also not a morning person. She asked if I could drop her off at the bus stop closer to her job on my way to work every day. I said I'd be willing to get off the highway and jump back on and she can get out and walk to the bus stop from the highway light. If she doesn't like that, she could take the bus. So she decided she will take the ride. She does not pay me gas money and I'm not asking for it. 
My other sister, 22Y female, is saying I am rude and a jerk for not taking her to the stop. This would add 10 minutes to my commute, which is already tight, because I don't like getting up early and start at noon. So tell me, am I the asshole? Comments. Map Kitchen 3880. Not the jerk. You're already helping her out by letting her live with you and giving her a ride part of the way. Adding more to your commute when mornings are already a struggle isn't fair, especially since you're not even asking for gas money. Boundaries are important. Story 8. Am I the asshole for stitching up my boyfriend's toy with the wrong thread? Hot Reflection 58. The title sounds stupid because it is. Yes, me and my boyfriend James, 24M, are both grown butt adults, and he has a stuffed toy turtle. He's weirdly attached to the stupid thing. He keeps it in his closet and occasionally takes it out to look at it for a bit before putting it back. It's slightly larger than the size of my hand, gray and pretty unremarkable. Recently, I've gotten a bit suspicious of the thing, which sounds stupid, but it does look like it's meant to hide something. And whether he picks it up, he squeezes it a little as if to check the inside. About a week ago, I couldn't take the curiosity anymore and took the thing out myself. There were stitches on the underside and I took a little nail clipper and opened it. I just wanted to see what was inside. It ended up just being a pen. I stitched it back closed, of course, and he didn't notice. This morning, he took it out again, and this time he noticed. Apparently, I used the wrong shade of gray. James was furious and called me quite a few names, including that I was the worst person to have ever existed ever and that he despised me. I reminded him that when I asked if I could touch it, he said I could do whatever as long as I put it back right. He said that obviously didn't extend to cutting it open and I was a psycho. He hasn't been speaking to me since and is keeping the turtle with him even though he's pretty embarrassed of it. Comments. Magic Builder 21. Yes, you're the jerk. What? How did you reread the fact that you physically damaged one of your boyfriend's favorite items, which probably has immense sentimental value to him, and then didn't even have the decency to let him know this? Or, you know, fix it? Not to mention, you're fixating on this stuffed animal as if it will somehow absolve you of blame. You think it's weird? Fine. Maybe a little cold-hearted, but fine. That does not give you the right to dismiss him. You're both grown but adults. Well, guess what? Grown but adults don't destroy other people's property. That's a crime. So instead of berating the person you're supposed to love in the hopes of getting internet sympathy points, maybe try growing as a person? You're the asshole. Story 9. Would I be the asshole for not traveling across town to pick up a cooked dish? AKA BAKDB. We had a baby last week and the outpouring support from friends and family has been nothing short of amazing. When it comes to people cooking us meals and bringing them over, we've been lucky and appreciative there too. Most people have sent gift cards since we live in NYC and basically no one has a car to bring meals over. This brings me to why I'm here. My sister-in-law has also been very supportive and close. It turns out she cooked a meal for us yesterday, but she wants us to pick it up from her despite us not having a car. She doesn't have one either. What makes it odder is that she is actually somewhat nearby today, looking at new apartments and bringing the dish with her for us to pick up. But it's a 30 minute walk each way from us or a subway or Uber. We're both busy with work and taking care of the baby. And it's a lot to pick up this dish later. Would I be the asshole for saying thanks, but we're unavailable to do so? My worry is that I could turn into a whole thing and wondering if I should just suck it up and head all the way over. The action I'm taking that's being judged is not picking up a cooked meal when someone was nice and cooked it for us. I could be the jerk for not seeming appreciative. Comments. Dutch Daddy 85 Not the asshole. A gift shouldn't come with obligations, especially not if the gift was never asked for. Hey, I baked you a cake. It's especially for you, but you will have to come and pick it up today, no matter what your schedule for today is, and if you don't, you're an asshole because it's a gift. Story 10 Am I the asshole for refusing to have someone join my partner and I when we had plans? Throw a GFS cousin. I've been with my girlfriend for two and a half years. She has a pretty big family, and one of the people she gets on well with is her cousin. Her cousin has similar interests to my girlfriend, but also shares some interests with me. Her cousin turned 16 in June, and since then, my girlfriend has invited her on a few plans we have. The first time, it was just to go bowling and then for food. She asked if her cousin could join us, and I agreed. Since then, my girlfriend keeps asking for her cousin to join us when we're going for food, going out for the day, going to the cinema, etc. 
The thing that's annoying me is she'll invite her cousin before even asking me if I'm okay with it. I get on with her cousin, but I don't want her joining us on most of our plans. I told my girlfriend I think she should start inviting her cousin to join us a lot less than she currently is. She asked why, and I pointed out the three of us are pretty much spending more time together than just me and my girlfriend. She tried to downplay it and said it wasn't as bad as I was claiming. She said her cousin doesn't have a lot of friends to spend time with. I said it's obviously sad she doesn't have a lot of people to go out with, but that doesn't mean she always has to be joining us. I said if she wants to spend time with her cousin, she can make separate plans with her instead of inviting her to join us. My girlfriend said I was being unfair, but I told her it was unfair to expect me to be fine without dates basically turning into babysitting. She said I was wrong for the comment and that I should be okay with it. Am I weird for telling my girlfriend to stop inviting her cousin to join us? Comments. Asura Rathalos. Not the asshole. Doing this to you basically invalidates your date. You can spend quality time together if you have to entertain another person. It feels like she's using your plans to make things interesting versus actually spending time with her cousin and making her own. Story 11. Am I the asshole for protecting my dad's money? Vooper 1983. In 2020, my father was diagnosed with dementia. After some deliberation, it was decided that I, being his firstborn, will become his LPA for both his health and welfare and his finances. At the time of his diagnosis, he was employed, and I managed to get him a nice buyout of his contract, which I nestled away in a savings account for him. He is now of pensionable age, and I get a full state pension as well as other benefits. Dad's divorced, but him and my mother have a goodish relationship. Recently, mom has started doing the cleaning for dad and taking him shopping once a week, which she gets paid for. However, dad's been showing her his bank account, and now mom feels she should be entitled to half of his pension and some of the lump sum he receives. Mom always has some sob story to get money out of him whenever she goes round to clean. Last week, it was two new tires at 250 pounds. The week before, it was 200 pounds for shopping the list is endless and he always hands her over the money. She is now also a pensionable age and gets her state pension, but it's left quite short at the end of each month. I appreciate that dad wants to help her out, but I'm outraged that mom thinks she's entitled to half of his pension and is demanding to know how much money he has in his accounts. My brother has now asked if dad can pay half of the airfare to get her over to Australia for Christmas. I have said no. All of my brothers and sisters are on my mom's side and think that it's only right for dad to look after her. Dad having dementia at times is blissfully unaware of what's happening, although he is adamant he wants to help her out. My worry is that down the line when he inevitably gets worse, he's going to be broke and not able to get even the basics he may need for his care. I have said no, she's not having half of his money, nor is he paying for her to go to Australia. I'm also on the edge of telling her I don't want her cleaning for him anymore, as every time she goes around, he seems to end up worse off. Am I the arsehole for being the only one that thinks his money should be for him? Comments. Pleasant Koala 147. Not the asshole. But I think it's time to sit your mother down and discuss what elder financial abuse is and point out that if he has been declared incompetent due to dementia and you've been given control of his finances, then taking money from him is crossing a clear legal barrier for which she could get in serious trouble. Also, point out that as his legal representative, you can get in trouble for using his money for purposes other than his care. Also. Point out that the only financial restitution she is entitled to is that which was outlined in the divorce. If that's been settled, then there is nothing else she is owed. If she and your siblings don't get the message, it's worth paying a lawyer to write an officially worded letter outlining what elder financial abuse is and what your role as FLA is. This isn't just to protect your dad, but you as well. I'm not British, but assuming your laws are similar enough to Australia, if you authorize expenditure that is not allowed under your role and your mother drains his account so there's no inheritance, your siblings could then turn it back on you and get you in legal trouble. But really hard line on this because the only one that will face repercussions is you. Story 12. Am I the asshole for making my daughter pay for her own college testing and applications because she was caught cheating? Frustrated mother. Am I the asshole? I received a call to pick up my daughter Lily because she had been caught cheating on her practice SAT. After arriving, I learned Lily's friend Sam had also been caught cheating. 
Her score was canceled, but thankfully Lily will still be allowed to retake the test and this has not gone under any kind of record. When I talked to Lily about what happened, she told me that Sam's mother was going to punish Sam if she didn't earn an exceptionally high score, and Sam had, in turn, put pressure on my daughter to help her cheat. I have felt for a long time that Sam is not a genuine friend to Lily, and has been trying to hold my daughter back to feel better about her own poor choices. And I had spoken to Lily about this before, and not to let Sam manipulate her into anything she knows is wrong. Lily told me that she had understood, yet did this, I told Lily that, to prove she will take her education seriously from now on, she will need to come up with a fee for her future tests and college applications on her own. I suggested she start working odd jobs, such as babysitting or dog walking for the neighbors to save up early. Despite telling me she understood, the time to register for the next test is approaching. My daughter asked me to pay because she is short on cash and her school will not offer the test again until spring. She brought up the original excuse that Sam pressured her into cheating. I told my daughter no, I am not going back on my word, and she will learn to treat these opportunities with respect once she has to earn it herself. I also told Lily that she needs to stop letting Sam manipulate her, and if she can't stand up to her, then maybe she doesn't have the mental maturity for college. Our extended family became involved in the disagreement, and are insisting that we cover the fee because it's for our education and is important for college. I am not allowing them to cover the fee for Lily because it's undermining my lesson. Inevitably, someone pretending to be her friend is going to pressure her to cheat again in college. Then, when she gets caught again, I will wind up losing thousands of dollars and Lily will lose her shot at good education. Her college journey won't last long, regardless, unless she learns responsibility now. Even though she spent her money poorly and doesn't have enough now, she will be able to wait and test in spring, even if it's a less convenient time for her. Am I the asshole for putting my foot down with Lily and our family? Edited to answer comments. Lily is now a junior in high school. Taking the test in spring will not delay Lily's college applications. If she takes the test in spring or even decides to retry during the summer, her score will still be available for her to use by the time fall applications roll around. I have also broken down the math in multiple comments already. Lily had and still has ample time and opportunity to save up. If she spends her money wisely this time, she will have more than enough to cover the fees, especially as these are the only expenses she will need to cover. Comments Disregardable I personally wouldn't choose a punishment that could potentially interfere with my kid achieving their college of choice. That could create lifelong resentment. It's your kid though.